Headed to week six, hopefully not going to have a bunch of injuries like last week. We have now four starting offensive players out for multiple weeks, if you are not aware of that. three A 4-3-4-3, four, three, four, three, which is really weird lineup, but we can deal with it. We can deal with it. Any more, though, maybe not so much, but I will say... The guard play wasn't the worst. I, I don't know what it is, but those backups that came in, they weren't the worst. Let's take a look at the players of the week. Take a look at our actual roster right now, because I actually haven't looked at it in a little bit. Joe Burrow with 50 passing attempts, pretty good performances. But, I mean, pretty tame as, as well this week. Trey Lance is very accurate and all that, but, you know, no crazy, crazy players of the week. But let's take a look at what the, you know, the team looks like. I also have a crisis in confidence, which for a 4-1 team is a little confusing. Maybe a uh, a player that isn't feeling loved as much by the lacking of uh, reps or something. I don't know. But, of course, Moore is injured, which means Caldwell is going to take his spot. Which, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying Caldwell has a chance to be, like, that guy. But he's played really well in that spot. And obviously, you're not losing any of the speed. A little less talented, if you will, but... You're not losing any of the speed. You're also gaining a little bit of size, right? Six foot one versus Moore's. I think he's like 5'10", if I'm not mistaken. Tanner was great. Metcalf is always great. You know, didn't have the craziest game last week, but two touchdowns is awesome. Greer was really good outside of that really bad interception. Fant is maybe the best tight end in the league at this point. It's kind of crazy to think, but performance-wise, he has looked like that. And at guard, we have... Warmack playing two spots. Lippitt, I think, is going to be the right guard as he has uh, learned quite a bit. Even though he's a little bit on the smaller size uh, side, I think he could play right guard. I think he'll be fine there. And then Warmack, the rookie, playing left. Looking at defense, nothing has changed, but Woolen officially back at number two. And everything has gone well ever since. Northcutt, the star dev DT. Nose tackle, if you will. Take a look at our crisis in confidence. Bro, we're dropping like flies. Please <laughs> change something. Haven't been as productive as I was hoping. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I don't know if I want to make a promise. Uh, I guess I'll make a promise. Promises suck, though. 100 plus receiving yards. I mean, I'll try. I'll try. I don't force it to really anyone, so it's not like uh, we're going to change something that we've we've been doing. You know, we haven't, you know, intended to uh, dis, you know disrespect them, but it just happens. No injuries for the Panthers. Another NFC South team. And uh, let's take a look at that roster, see how much it's changed. The 4-1 and one Panthers still feature Hikaru at their starting quarterback position. Who would have thought? These, like, it's crazy because, you know, I just kind of look for storylines to change our roster. But the storylines that come into play against our roster so far, this season specifically, have been kind of crazy, right? Hikaru, starting quarterback of the Panthers, all the potential in the world but can he put it together? Has he put it together? I don't know. They're 4-1. Maybe they have. Christian McCaffrey still a Panther in this universe. Max Cobb, the backup, looking really good. And then we have the wide receivers, DJ Moore, Artie Tut, Darius Slayton, and Robbie Anderson with Van Jefferson at 5. A very good group of receivers. Tremble looks good. Aquanu is amazing. Left guard David Andrew or Edwards looks great. Center's iffy. Right guard solid. Right tackle's great. Left end, Brian Burns, one of the best edge rushers in the league. Peyton Turner probably shouldn't be in the league. <laughs> DTs, some decent uh, run stoppers. Left outside linebacker, Chase on. Uh, he's decent with 80 finesse. Inside linebackers, you got Mark Gaines, who's probably their best linebacker with that speed. And then Shaq Thompson's still around, which is impressive. Speed at cornerback with Dante Jackson and J.C. Horn, who really hasn't taken that next step, which is a little surprising. Eddie Jackson, very good free safety, but... He's definitely regressing. And then Jeremy Chin, amazing strong safety. Got some upgrade points after focusing on the practices. And I will say physical upgrade for Chapman was great. Two release, two medium route, two catch in traffic, and one two break tackle. Uh, catching and catch in traffic, not great. But that spec catch and jumping is insane. If we were to actually use him quite a bit, you know, he'd actually have himself a very good chance to become a great player. But we just don't really have the tight end or the wide receiver spot. Even with the injury to Morris, he doesn't fit the slot role, really. Ross Jacobson, obviously a freak. Still a little raw, but he is getting super good. And I think I'm going to go with possession. I think he needs to get better at catching. And uh, I think that's the best way to do it is with this upgrade. Although, that looked like trash. Good run blocking, though, which is probably his primary use on our team, which 
I suppose in turn is a good upgrade. Slot upgrade for Chambers, who's been pretty solid. I think he's been pretty good. Uh, he hasn't had the flashy plays, but he has definitely done his job well. And honestly, early in the season, maybe even better, crazy enough, than uh, Wolin. So there's that. Mafe, good pass rusher. I think his run block stuff is terrible. So if we can get like block shedding like 70 plus, that'd be great. Does not happen here, though. It's just weird because he's an outside linebacker. So run stopper is a weird upgrade to get. You know, it's, it's kind of strange. Also, for an upgrade in sliders, this is what I'm rocking with currently. Uh, I have increased in interceptions up like 15 from last week, and I've changed their pass defense reaction time and pass coverage to 50. It used to be at zero. I honestly don't know if those sliders work. It seems like they don't, so I want to put them at 50 just so I can have something similar to what happens in our rebuilds. When we do rebuilds, the coverage is damn near lockdown on base all Madden, so I don't know if it's just I'm messing with the sliders too much and it's just confusing the game, but I've also done the what seems to be only way to get the sliders to work, which is importing them from the main menu, so I'm just trying to get a hard experience here, uh, funny enough. You know, zero run block, one run block really hasn't felt like that, so I just... I just don't know if they don't know what their sliders are like or they don't know what they're doing, but it just seems like no matter what I do, the sliders are just not working the way they're supposed to. But regardless, let's head in for week six. At home, the weather is fine. It's bright out. I would like a nighttime game in fairness, but it feels right. Things just feel right, and we're hoping that we can have a nice, clean game. Nobody gets injured. Everybody put their hands up. Nobody takes any crazy steps. That that towel's already kind of getting crazy to me. Got the helicopters flying in. I'm sure that wind may have hurt someone's eardrums out for three quarters. I mean, it's just... Can we please just stay safe, boys? Let's just, like... Let's put on our protection. You know what I mean? Like, let's just... Let's not catch anything that we don't want to you know, put us out for weeks with. 75% of the field is covered in shadows... 75% of this roster is injured or will be at the end of this uh, game. Also, speaking of Milner, haven't seen him much. Of course, it's because Porter's in at that number two role, which is where Marshall played last season. But even then, Porter doesn't get in crazy amounts either. Safety is just not a position that we have a lot of openings at, and yet we have a lot of talent there. Uh, Hikaru, former Seattle Seahawks starting quarterback, 1,310 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions. It's kind of what happens, and then he just falls apart. Will that happen today? In this super pressured situation. I mean, coming back to Seattle, where the team spent a pretty decently high draft pick on him, it didn't work out. I don't know if there's ill will towards him, but I won't say that I, they're, they're the friendliest group. And we kind of maybe got away with a PI, but we're just trying to pass rush. <laughs> I didn't cheat. And here are the notable inactives. Four injured players here with multiple weak injuries. I mean, this is... Not something we're going to be getting over anytime soon. This is uh, another month away before we get to full health, and that is a dot. I mean, that coverage is pretty tight, but that ball is on the money. A car looking good on that first throw. Well, first completion. The other throw is a read option that just never, or a screen pass that never had a chance. From the 37 yard line, Hikaru trying to get a quick throw in there does. Once again, when he. Hits his throws with that gun power, you know, that gunslinger power. He's good. But as we suspect, it's the bad ones. It's when they're bad. Oh, are they bad? Let's see what happens in this one as they're moving on the field decently. And there goes the blitz. Brooks taking him down. And I thought that was him who was injured. It is not. It is Andre James, the center. Injuries have been super prevalent so far. In the last couple of games, and this one changes no differently at all. We focus on stopping the short pass, and so far, not doing a great job with it, but right about that being their focus, as they're getting this ball out early and often. Third and seven, oh, Mafe going against a superstar. I'm sure this is going to go well. Does actually win it, and takes the shot against Woolen, who plays it literally perfectly. Not a bad throw, not a bad route, just it's against Woolen. I don't know what you're doing. Like, why are, why are you throwing that against Woolen? He's just, he's not going to be beat, simply put. Decent little drive, but sputtered and punted to the 19-yard line. Not a great punt, but we will get our chance with Greer, who outside of that really bad interception last week, had an amazing game, specifically in that first half. 
And we're trying to build on that. Ten touchdowns, five interceptions, 1,400 yards. A little bit of a slower start touchdown to pick ratio-wise this year, but obviously still good season to start her out. Coming in with the stretch, and I think on that side is the best way to go. Maybe a little bit too hard of a cut, and nowhere to go is Tanner. Blocks not great, just nowhere to go. Simply put, that's about it. we got the running back out there on a route. And Tanner will get this ball, but they actually play that pretty well. Nice stiff arm, but puts that ball in danger. Gains about five, which is at least half, making this more manageable. Shaq Thompson's still talented, so I don't want to run it in against him. I think he can make a play here. And that is Metcalf, but with the under pressure, didn't actually take a look at the abilities of Brian Burns. Maybe he does have under pressure, and he actually doesn't have under pressure, but still under pressure was the throw. And here goes a run to Metcalf or McCaffrey, who somehow gets eight on what was a blitz and thought a blown up play. Really good season starts for McCaffrey so far. He has been deadly. Nearly 800 yards through five games is really good, and that's just rushing. I thought we were the safety, but honestly, considering it's an eight yard run to start. Why not just give him the first down? If I was them, I'd debatably decline it. Fresh set of downs, so. It is what it is. They can't really take the shot as easily as they maybe would have. And Oliver is woolen, but more this time actually coming down with it. More of a chance to come down with it, in fairness, is that jump ball situation was just a fail setup. Not many guys are even close to the size of woolen, let alone talent-wise. And outside, a really good play. Doesn't get him down, but slows him down. First down, though, four yards for McCaffrey. Yeah, I don't want to make it too much about Hikaru and his relationship to us, but... A problem we've had with him, too, before he got traded away. Chambers off the edge, doing well, and a fumble. Was he down? We'll find out after this. You obviously run this in. Not going to celebrate because we aren't too sure. But as I was about to say, you know, struggled to finish out drives. A lot of field goals, a lot of turnovers. Which, speaking of, they just had one. But was he down? He was not. McCaffrey fighting with the rookie the whole way. And then the, the second person comes in. Chambers rips it. And it's a fumble. It's the stuff like that you can't account for that makes us such a good team. You take away those kind of unexpected takeaways, turnovers, if you will. And, I mean, are we that deadly? I don't know. We're a good team, but we're not great. Not great. But these turnovers, we're just such a high turnover forcing defense it's just you know it's going to come at some point and some pretty good blocks but good job by everyone around they gained four but it's manageable both sides a lot to ask for from jamal which is why we're bringing some help over there and that is the hikaru we know and traded that could not have been a more open player and he missed him by a mile you literally could kick the ball to him and have a better chance than hitting what he just did and yeah, that's a really good pun is they're not going to give us a chance to return it, which we would have had room. Mr. West is now in. I think we're actually going to try to hand this off to him if we can. And okay blocks, but they just had more numbers. So far, looking pretty tight, looking tough to throw on. And Greer is going to last second get out of there and gain about eight. Really didn't like the way that they were sitting on those routes, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw an interception here. And speaking of throwing an interception, forced it right to Patterson, who I thought was going to be open because Thompson stepped towards the player going inside, and he baited us. I mean, look at Thompson. I see him going after Fan. I thought he was going to take that all the way, and I just, I mean, I already had it read, and I was just like, well, that's GG. Panthers defense giving us some troubles early. Come on, Northcutt. Get in there, big fella. Oh, we just missed so hard. First down. McCaffrey 11 yards it's about the easiest play you can get when we're just I mean well, what kind of like well look away please oh my what a tackle was it the best tackle attempt I've ever seen pretty much I mean I've been how you get better technique than that I mean just just throwing your body out there just like a crazy madman I mean that's that's how they teach it six yards gained on that one Barnes covering the running back. He's got the speed, but nobody does over the middle. Really good job by Chambers, who got beat, though. To stop him at the one. I mean, we're a really good goal line defense, specifically inside the five. Don't count us out of stopping him here, which means count them out 
of of the end zone. Marshall one on one against Moore is not a good look for us. And Marshall can't get there, but a touchdown for Christian McCaffrey. Deciding to spin him into the end zone. Very interesting strategy. Didn't work there, but uh, maybe it'll work next time. End of the first quarter, uh, pretty much, and we look like we're in shambles on offense. I gotta admit. More opportunities, though, to actually play offense for them, so it does kind of add up. It's called what gets us to the 26-yard line. Nice little return. Slam from Patterson. There's a lot going on here, especially with Tanner out there. And that's not really going to get you much, maybe a yard, two yards. I do have to say, they definitely seem like they're in tighter coverage. Got to admit, it shouldn't make any sense, but it does. And inside, there goes Patterson finally getting involved for a gain of 14. Quick throw, don't give him a chance to develop that blitz and you know beat him over top. And they're like, well, they got us. They won that one. This one I'm kind of, nope, we're going to go right over the middle again. Don't give him a chance. Caldwell with that 98 speed gets nine yards before they even know what hit him. And now it's the start of the second quarter. Statistically, uh, I did not expect to be up on them as they've had way more drives than us. And more opportunities with the ball in general. Second and one, I kind of like this from Caldwell and Tanner. Let's see who gets the ball on this. Obviously, it's going to go to one of them. Would, well, maybe not obviously, but likely. And that's a tough one. That is maybe another force to Patterson that wasn't actually there. The safety made a good read, but at the same time, the safety is reading only one route. He's not going to jump the comeback route from Metcalf. I thought I could throw that right in front of him, and that's just a really bad read. I like it's stupid too because even if I don't get this for Patterson, well, I guess the safety doesn't know that that comeback route kind of turned more into like a, a freaking streak. Maybe he should have been covering uh, Metcalf, but yeah, I mean that's that's good coverage. But I, I like even if we don't get the scenario, what's the big deal? It's just a morale drop. Like you don't get anything really for getting it, so. Focusing a little bit too much on that, focusing on getting him the ball more in general, which I do want to do without that crisis and confidence thing. Without that even, I was thinking, hey, maybe he should get the ball a little bit more. And wow, okay, I didn't even look at what happened, but Barnes, one of the best blitzing corners in the league, instantly gets him. I would love to see how this happened. Yeah, just too many players, couldn't block them all. Great work. Nakaru's uh, a guy that you blitz and you win quite regularly. Brooks going against the running back. Could see a blocker here. They're not. They're going to have him sit down. And that ball has no chance of being caught. An ugly offensive performance from both sides so far. Has this game still tied at seven? Some really ugly reads from us, though. Has us already throwing two interceptions in this one, which is not good. And also with Moore being injured, Caldwell may need to come off of the return game. Like, we have a lot of options, in fairness, at receiver. But Caldwell is probably the best option at slot. Outside, gonna have to cut it back in as we will never get anything on that outside there. Gaining only a yard. Speaking of Caldwell, it is sweet time, my dudes. You are going against Burns on this side, who is fast, but he is not Caldwell fast. Trying to cut it inside, doesn't work out, but gains 11. And with that counting as a pass, we need to see more of that because we need all the help we can get getting some yards in this one, specifically in the pass game. Try to get that confidence boosting. That's a tough throw, but it will be there. Fant will gain 17, maybe 18 yards. We're talking about it before. When it's around the 50-yard line, we started before the 50-yard line. Hash, don't ask me. I, I just don't know what's going on. I don't know why. I just refuse to care. And over the middle, that is not a force to Patterson. Nice move, one to beat. If Jacobson would have hustled a little bit more, who knows? Maybe he scores. That wasn't a force. I didn't even want that. Like I didn't even care if that play led to that or anything. So it really matter to me. Tanner up the middle. And so far, this run game has been non-existent. Wide receiver cross. Metcalf looks great. Do I really want to run him into the safety, though? If I streak this, this looks like guaranteed yardage. And it is. As long as the throw is kind of decent, which it gets him to the two because of how much speed he has. You knew you were going to gain something. And gain we did. I don't know if this is like the greatest bait of all time, but this looks like a rushing touchdown guarantee, and it is. I mean, we didn't even have to sprint. Finally, the offense has a drive. We get on the board, finally, in this one with that offense. And, of course, Morgan misses the extra point. Some, uh, some iffy special team situations going on here. And, wow, I don't know what the hell we just did. I don't like it, though. McCaffrey doing a lot to get away from Brooks. I don't blame him, but... 
Doesn't really go one way or the other, I, I suppose. Alexander near the line of scrimmage. Maybe blow this up if it's a run. We kind of showed our hand. And it works, but we missed the tackle. But he also misses the first down. And they're going to give him credit. I thought he was short, which we're an opportunistic defense. I mean, if it's third and one, I, I believe in us. Second and, like, one or second and short, I don't. And Northcutt, he would have earned that freaking dev up this week if he had it. But he had it last week, and I suppose it doesn't matter because he's already star. Adams near the line of scrimmage. I'm trying to blow this one up, and he does, but another missed tackle has McCaffrey gaining him so many yards after contact. I mean, 8 for 32, you could argue that he's actually 6 for 10. Maybe a decent, you know, deal at the grocery store, but here that's... Pretty awful, but we sell, and there goes Adams just crushing the running back, Cobb. Do have to give him credit, though. They are, uh, you know, taking away this clock pretty nicely here. I thought it was going to be the squiggle route. Oh, that's deep over the middle. Doesn't take it, but it actually works out kind of as he gets the block from McCaffrey, kind of around the same yards gained. Carr looking pretty decent, you know, playing similarly to Greer here, but doesn't have those two interceptions. Maybe lucky to not have them, in fairness, but... Both quarterbacks in a weird spot this game. You know, both not really taking the shots and not really getting the big plays, but slowly moving down the field, getting sold by players around them, realistically. You know, Chris McCaffrey fumbles. They're probably up with this drive. Instead, they don't have it, and we get a touchdown on defense. Second and six screen pass late with Adams. Might still get there, and we overran it. We did cause him to cut back. He will be short. It'll be a third and one from the 35-yard line. And with them having a really likely chance to convert this, I don't see myself calling a timeout here. We're a little confused on defense, not going to lie. Gonna drop back deep, and that will be a quick short throw. Tremble gets out of bounds for the first down. They're moving very frustratingly as well. This is the screen we're on. Oh, they block super early, though. And thankfully, McCaffrey couldn't get out there. We were going to be on it for a pick. Instead, the lineman just locked us up. Dropping back with Porter, and nobody is underneath on the tight end again, but he does only gain two. I can I can kind of see why we weren't covering him. That was a pretty bad play on their behalf. And do we risk Maffe? I mean, coming at him hard with this outside blitz. And there goes Chambers, the rookie. Oh! Deflected and caught by the Panthers. And on top of it, Jordan Brooks is injured. There is no way. Decent play design by us. It didn't actually get there pressure-wise. I mean, the pressure got there, but it, you know, it didn't get there sack-wise. Chambers plays this perfectly. I mean, he swats it with one hand, kind of trips over the guy, and then the guy with all the freaking concentration in the world catches it. All right, kind of a wild start to this one. We have a minute 14 with three timeouts to try and make something happen. And that is a ball that is apparently fumbled. I thought should have been intercepted, which, you know, Shaq Thompson already had one. This could come back, and I'm really hoping it does. This is questionable. Booth review, clutch timing that. I can't believe it was an interception, uh, intercepted. I, I just honestly can't. Thankfully, it's not a fumble, but how is that not picked? Clock will continue to burn, which I didn't really think about at the time, but it's okay. And there goes Fant burning, speaking of, to the 45-yard line. Three timeouts, 37 seconds. Kind of taunting their sideline. Hopefully, the refs aren't over there. Also, why did our guys block like it was a screen? It, it wasn't, but you guys sure as hell looked like it was. I don't know how you feel about this. And Metcalf may have been open, but I just didn't trust it. Jack Thompson's been great. 3rd and 16 with... Nah, not 3rd and 16. Uh, 31 seconds. 2nd and 1. Do you take that? Fant is open. Oh, don't you dare. Jesus, it is Dante Jackson, but I really can't believe that just happened. I seen Fant. I just, the pressure was there, and I was just like, I'm going to throw it up to the guy that I trust the most. And we just can't get it there. And because of the drop back, we're going to be at the 48-yard line. I mean, I mean, if I was them, I'd probably take this time out. Instead, they don't want anything crazy to happen. But at the same time, they're kind of giving me a chance to get the Hail Mary. Super sell by us to drop back like that. Maybe should have just ran it. 
Maybe should, with the pressure, getting there like that, we should have probably just ran it. They're saying 65-yard field goal? Some wind. They're really going to feel dumb if we hit this. Accuracy's off a little bit, though. And he hits it with the wind. 65-yarder for the man who missed an extra point this game. Wow. Well, that was a hell of a way to end it. With that sideline tip catch for a touchdown and a 65-yard field goal make to put us back on top. Can't really ask for a less wilder end. Up by two, we do get the ball as well, which is good. And, I mean, it's kind of a neutral returning point. We have our guys to the left. Good setup. Number two getting kind of two blocks there, but turn still won't get us to the 20. Patiently waiting. Blocks were good, not great. Decided to focus on running the ball this quarter. Hopefully up the middle is open as that's what we're focusing on. And we're going to take this to the outside, try to use that speed, which Tanner does have. But they were kind of waiting for him there. Outside, I believe in Caldwell, but that ball is, you know, we're on the short side. That would be a tough one to get through, I think. And Tanner, who's fighting, offensive line, lesser talents out here, in fairness. Struggling a little bit. Really just setting this up for Tanner, who's not the greatest of receiving backs. Maybe Caldwell. Fant, please. Fant does it. Holds on. First down, Greer, those two interceptions, it kills me, but hasn't played a bad game. We just had two bad reads that were both intercepted. First and 10 for the 35-yard line outside. Good blocks, and there's Tanner. Run a man over, won't. I mean, kind of runs through him a little bit, but to the 48-yard line, decent run for a change. Trying to keep him, keep him guessing if we can. For a route, which they put two guys on. Tanner way out there. Try to cut it inside, doesn't work out against two. Metcalf with a guy pressing on him. I mean, safety depends on how he plays it. Oh, they played it deep, which means Patterson's open. I will say for Patterson, and maybe not our fault as they got Metcalf on the team, maybe you should be doing better. Maybe you, maybe it's not us. Maybe it's a you kind of situation, buddy. But either way, first and ten. There's Fant again, overthrown Decided to go for the touch pass there is uh, Jackson's a pretty fast player over that side. I think it was, I don't even know who the hell it was, but they, they kind of had the matchup there. Tanner doesn't really have that change of direction, which means that the Excel just goes through the freaking floor when we try to change or, you know, hesitate, be patient with the ball. Potentially looking right past Shaq here. It's not easy, but it's on the money, and we tried a hurdle, which was a really dumb mistake. To the two now. Under center, I kind of want to just throw the fade to Metcalf. He has the size. And there's Metcalf, who just mosses him. I mean, he got to the moon. I mean, did he kick him in the face with his knee? He just went down. We got to see this. I mean, he does have him beat. The corner's like, oh, God. Oh, God. What's happening here? And, you know, to that corner fade, if we just throw it to that spot, don't even have to jump up. And he just climbs the ladder. Morgan hit that extra point, at least, which will now make this a two-possession game. Maybe get a little more aggressive because of it. You have that safety of not... Oh! Good uh, risk by a Hikaru there. Five yards gained on what I thought maybe could have been picked. It was a long throw. I know he's got some uh, O'Hazes in. Interesting. Oh yeah, Brooks is out. I forgot about that. I didn't even see what the injury was. Alexander missing. Hayes locked up the whole way. Four yards gain. Once again, a situation where they felt like they were going to get that first down, and they just don't. Alexander out there against the tight end. Come on, Red. Hayes getting locked up again in the block. Absolutely pummeled the CMC, but a gain of 16 on the play will extend the drive. And I don't know if that's like a longer-term thing, but dislocated shoulder could be a problem. I know some dislocations can be a bit disastrous, but I think shoulder is probably the most common dislocation, right? And there goes Northcutt. The size of him to make that look that easy is absurd. I mean, did you see what he did? I mean, got off the block and in the same kind of move, just lowered the shoulder on the guy with his weight and strength. Made it look like the guy just wasn't even like a person. Like, he made him look like he was actually, like, made of plastic. Alexander in perfect coverage, but Wolin not, but doesn't get the feet down. It's a great throw by Hikaru. 
That one is on the receiver. Let's see if Ed Oliver can maybe get a push on this left guard. And gets the inside move. Pushing him hard. Tries the swat, and that ball never has a chance. Although I will say, Wollen got Moss. Just wasn't in bounds. Holy. Got a rush there. Didn't get that. Not going to let this bounce. You just don't know which way it's going to go. It's Caldwell. will take it. Nice little effort to the 16, 17. First and 10, they have some players up here. And Tanner making the most of nothing. Gains two. Definitely a struggle sometime running the ball, even with our focus on the inside handoffs this uh, half. And we're in trouble there. No one really open. Maybe you dump it off to Tanner, but the throws behind the line of scrimmage to him have not been great. Caldwell in the middle of the field with a comeback route from Patterson. Might be what the doctor ordered. And never had a chance. Patterson with a good route, but the block's non-existent. Offense for the Panthers wasn't great, but the defense, pretty superb. Going to force a three and out. Punt's pretty good. He will have a chance, though. Oh, he, did he fair catch it or did he foot get on the line? Couldn't tell. Christian McCaffrey looking for touchdown number 10 on the year. Starts out at wide receiver for him this drive. And a Porter in great coverage. Had a chance at that one. Didn't get it, though. Maybe he was just a little out of range. I didn't really see. Marshall got to come all the way across the field here. And it is a screen. Marshall's out there. And really good coverage with the help on the play. Only going to gain two. Both offenses struggling mightily here. Which is good for us. We have that nine-point lead. Another screen. And he's going to throw it. It's going to be picked off by Alexander, who is fast. Even faster than McCaffrey. And that will be a touchdown. Hikaru doing a Hikaru there. May have just cost his team the game. We say a 16-point game isn't isn't good enough. We're going for the jugular here. Do you maybe fade that to Metcalf again? And you do. And is that going to be P.I.? What's the call? Did kind of cut under us there. I agree. I agree. I think he undercut us. We got some players up in this line. I still kind of want to throw it, but how much Seattleing can I do in one video? And, yeah, no blocks. Should have threw it. 15-point game still. I don't know if there was like a roughing or what the hell happened, but uh, they're starting their drive at the 40. Definitely good for them. Hayes, nice change of direction. He did have him. Akaru taking a long time to throw this. Gets mossed. Does Barnes. Taking him to the 32. Giving his guy a chance, and he makes the play. We are selling in these situations all game. Ooh, that was a little false start action. No. As McCaffrey spins a tackle attempt on that edge by Woolen, making it a second and five. They've got plenty of time. Pick six obviously hurt them a lot. I don't know what Hayes is doing. He's literally stirring things all day. Actual chef. And once again, getting stuck on the block. Oh, that's a nice shot of moves by McCaffrey. 23 yards gained to the four. Starting the fourth. This game's far from over. I mean, we did score a touchdown, especially, I mean, it was defense in fairness, but we've uh, not had the greatest second half last couple of games, and out there over-pursued is Hayes, but because of that over-pursuit, forces McCaffrey back in. Bringing five on this is devastating, but we're going to bring the rush as giving time has not worked out, and we get beat on that side, and Wollen is Moss this time. Van Jefferson, the jump ball god. I mean, this is such a dangerous... I thought he was going to throw it where we passed off. And, I mean, it just goes right through... No, not even right through his hands. He just didn't get in front of it in time. There's obviously no hard feelings because he hit a 65-yard field goal. But it is worth noting we did miss an extra point in this game. Oh, there goes Tanner. No help from Patterson, though, who could have sprung us. J.C. Horn with Patterson. Locked up most of this game. This is a tough one. I'm just going to force that. And Fant has been so dependable. I mean, that guy catches everything. I mean, he'd catch a baseball in a hurricane. This guy's insane. As much as I would like to run the ball, they are not allowing me to, really. There's Patterson. Really good throw. Really good catch. Gaining six. Opens up the opportunities a little bit. You know, you get stopped on this run. It's still doable. You get stopped on a second and ten run. It's like, uh-oh. Speaking of, uh-oh, there goes Tanner, though. 
making the best out of a terrible situation. I mean, you really could not ask for worse blocks than that. I mean, like, just they're terrible. Outside, let's see. We've been a little bit better in the stretch game. And that guy burning again. Just burning right through the line. Loss of three. He almost had us on that other play. We we're just lucky that he uh, he missed the tackle. Jeez, man. Can we do better? And that is P.I. They're going to call nothing. He was P.I.'d. Patterson, catch him, please. And he misses on touchdown. Actual P.I., dude. Actual P.I. The NFL is all about anticipation. And he just stops him. Like, bro, he is pressing another player. It's not even that he... It's P.I. Our guy just doesn't run a... <laughs> oh, it was a timing play. Really? We're going to let Van Jefferson go with Hayes? This is not good. And they go to top. It's tied up, boys. Three interceptions for Mr. Greer. All three of them, not his fault. Lovely. And there goes Caldwell seeing a lane, seeing so much daylight, and then it just closes up on him. All I can tell you is, even if we're going for, like, Superstar in the future, I am not focusing on a scenario. I don't care. Tanner got blasted, but gained six high effort play. Maybe not from the players around him, but from uh, from him himself. Really good stuff. There goes Caldwell. Go down. I mean, we're just setting him up to die. Terrible throw. Missed seven throws, and three of those are intercepted. That is just pain. Kind of weird trail route. I mean, he's open. Trusted that. I mean, the way they backed off, they back off a lot on those. Like, we can probably get away with just, like, throwing that spot, like, a ton. Deep shot of Patterson. I like Caldwell here a lot. Fan on the block and release could be my option as well. That's not a force. But what a throw and catch to Patterson. That's just insane speed from Dante. Like, the way Patterson is influencing him upfield, sure, maybe with Metcalf on that side, you would expect maybe it's going to cut out that way. But, like, he has room on him. And as soon as he's breaking, the corner knows where he's going. Like, how is that even possible? We almost just threw another really unfortunate interception. But the ball was so good that it just worked out, thankfully. Now, that would have been so annoying if he would have got picked off on that. I would have been so furious. And really good job by Tanner. You see the way he just lowered the shoulder and forced his way into the pile there. Sadly, though, uh, no blocks yet again. I don't really want Fant motioning, but that's what we're going to get. Really good blocks, and Tanner once again slipping off the tackle gets us to the nine. It's been a gritty one. Improving in the run game, though, because of his tackle-breaking abilities in this second half. And Burns is there, but he's not really there, right? Like I said, he's there, but he's not really there. Tanner doing what he can gains, like, two. I honestly, like, I don't know what our actual yards per carry on the game is going to finish with, but he literally has run for nothing but two yards every single run. <laughs> like, it's just, that's literally his average. And I like Fant over on this side. And there goes West for the touchdown. Is that his first carry as a Seattle Seahawks, at least in the regular season? Either way, it's a touchdown. All right. They needed two touchdowns and one of them to be a two-point conversion. They had that. So really, what is another touchdown? Nothing. Nothing when you consider what they've come back from. Eight-yard gain on the very first play with a full three minutes and all timeouts remaining. Plenty of time for this team to make it happen. We'll see with the speed. Wolling getting burned off the edge and giving him so much more room. Tut has been great. These receivers have been really good for Ikaru. This has been a pretty wild game. Could it end in overtime? And Oliver trying to push him. Can't do it. Alexander over pursuing. Teamwork effort. Taking down Tremble. Seven yard gain. Two minute warning from midfield. And then second and three. I kind of, yeah, I was about to say, I kind of. Asking them to run the ball, so let's see what we can do. Gonna pressure Van. Really good job on that press. Then take the shot on Wool. I think you go ooh aggressive. Didn't come down with it. And speaking of aggressive, coming aggressive on this play here. And try to get Marshall kind of creeping over. And it's not gonna be a run. It's gonna be a nice play action. And Wosu won't get back in time. First down, Panthers. 
Blitzing Adams. Screen pass. Alexander's over there. Really good hit. A loss of three. And that will technically get things moving a little bit here. Oh, Adams, please. Damn, Chambers got beat. I don't know if it was just press man he beat him, but... Oh, Lord. And they're going to run it, which is a really smart call. We're not ready, but Wolin makes the one-on-one -on -one play himself. And they are going to drop. I can't get into man coverage. And that's going to be a terrible decision by them. He gains three yards. They're just letting the clock go, though. I don't understand. They have time. With Alexander over there. We're, we're kind of giving the middle up a little bit, but maybe not so much. Another screen pass. I didn't even see it right away. Porter, great coverage. And, I mean, they got to call a timeout here. Fourth and six. Okay, they might not, but I'm going to, especially with five wide. All right, boys. I'm stuck on Ed Oliver. They're literally going to give me no chance. Hit! And Okoru misses the throw. He had a chance, but Ed Oliver with the pressure forced it out. They do have three timeouts, but that is a miracle that they're asking for. And Tanner does an okay job. Also fights hard, making it even worse for them because that clock starts to drain more. Four seconds wasted. Counter right into Burns is interested. It's obviously run, run. I should have followed that right guard or the left guard who pulled to the right. Obviously, no matter what, we are not trying to give them a free chance. So run, run, run. Run, run, run. And Tanner breaks one. That's going to be a GG. Going off script on the dive. Everyone in the world thought he was going straight up the middle. The cut back to the left was genius. And it'll help us win a very close battle against our former quarterback. And there you have it. The Seattle Seahawks improved to 5-1. and one. Hopefully Jordan Brooks is not injured long term. Because if he isn't, then we will have not incurred any long term injuries. For the first game in two weeks, three weeks, technically, if you had this one. Greer, not the perfect performance. A couple of forces in there from us specifically, and I expect us to get back on track next week. It was just a high-pressure situation where it's like, you know, you got Greer going against Hikaru. You know, he wants to prove something a little bit, and he gets a little too happy. Maybe uh, believing in his talents a little too much and, you know, getting sold a little bit by, you know, his teammates, the Patterson Really should not have gotten us intercepted there, and he just did. Both quarterbacks, not great, but Hikaru technically gets the nod in this one. Run game, Tanner was strugglesome, but he fought hard for 76 yards. Patterson, 103 yards. Metcalf with a touchdown again, 60 yards for him. And Fant, he was involved a little bit, 5 for 50. Defensively, sack totals, pretty tame stuff. Uh, but we did apply a lot of pressure in that game, I can't lie. And then Morgan with an insanely clutch uh, and very important 65-yard field goal. Noah Fant with an upgrade this time. How good is he? He is super solid, isn't he? 90 speed. Uh, I mean, I guess vertical threat, right? Make him uh, even better route running-wise, maybe. Gets medium route, two to run block. A speed upgrade. 91 speed for Fant. He's a physical specimen. Uh, and as far as Jamal Adams goes, I suppose run support is kind of, you know, his scheme fit and what we want him the most for anyways. Gets two to man, two to tackle, one to play wreck, which not really block shed, but cool story, man. And no new injuries. Damn it, I went to the box score. That's my bad. No new injuries. So uh, Mr. Brooks, uh, good. Safe to say. Crisis and confidence. Let's see what this gets us. If this is only morale, I'm going to be so mad. Please be like a plus five to medium route or something. Because I woke up feeling like a different player today. Yeah. <laughs> player that was just yelling at us and caused me to play differently. He's in great spirits. 2,500. I'm glad he's in great spirits because I'm sure Greer is in as he has made that interception total closer to that touchdown total. But either way, a tough fought, very impressive victory for us. Now moving on to 5-1, and one, facing off against the Texans next. Don't know how much they've turned the ship around, but looking at the division, 3-2, and 2-3, two, 2-3. And three, two and it's looking good early. Definitely looking good early, but you can see the Vikings and Niners are after that. And, you know, what other great teams are lurking just behind the shadows? I don't know. But find out with me. Maybe uh, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jumpicare, second channel, Picare Plays. Uh, if you're not new, really appreciate your continued support, and that be it, matey.
Hope you guys come back for the next video. But until next video, see ya.